Hi, Achila here, and I'm a member of the Solid DX team, which means that since Solid start reached beta and it's very fast approaching stability, a lot of products have been looking for ways to create content around getting started with Solid Start. Start, start, start. So the best way to do that, in my opinion, is that I'll show you how to get your feet wet with solid start how to get it going what are the best practices we can do and then you can go and integrate things in your own way which means that it's a great opportunity for you community to pick whatever tool you're familiar with and bring together and there's like a very green field of like pretty much nobody at this point has i started with solid start so you can go there and create an open source contribution. And I'll show you now how to get started with Solid Start. Once that is done, stick around. I'll give you a tip on how to compound this open source contribution into more. We pick a place in our system where we want things to be at and we're gonna create Solid Latest and we're gonna add our Solid Guide uh, in there. And I'm using PNPM because that's what I'm most comfortable with. What I usually do is I create the guide with PNPM. And once that is done, because NPM is what comes in stock. And because of that, a lot of getting started prefer to use NPM. So there's no additional system dependency. I then remove my node modules and reinstall things and make sure everything is working. So I'm going to pick basic. So it comes with, uh, with solid start. And now we can change directory into our solid guide, install all our dependencies. So with that, you see the starter brings us SolidJS Meta, Solid Router, Solid Start, SolidJS, and Vinci at the latest versions at the time of this recording. And then we're ready to go coding. So in VS Code, this is the structure of our app. We go into source and you have the entry server to handle the server side. You have the entry client to handle the client side and the app is the new root. So the app is going to create the router and then we pass a root to this router. That's going to handle all the asynchronous routes. So everything that we navigate. And within that, then we can put all our file routes. So whatever is inside file routes is going to come inside the children of this root. And, and that's the basic structure. Then all our file routes are going to go inside the routes folder. And then you can uh, define your routes. So what we're going to do is inside source, I'm going to create a new folder that I like to call library. Inside this library, you can have, it's usually where I put the stuff that I want to have like as data fetchers and, and things of sorts. So there's one module that we need from solid, which is the cache that comes from solid router. Here's basically where you create your integration API. So if you have some sort of database SDK, or if you have something that's, um, um, your client that's going to fetch some data. If you want to put some model, if you want to reach for an external API, this is usually where I put this logic. So for example, a nice pattern that I like to do is um, let's create um, get data function. That's um, I'm trying to keep things as generic as possible. So what, what we're going to do is basically wrap this thing inside a cache. And then this cache, we're going to pass a use server because we want data fetching to always happen in the server. And then with that done, you can we can wrap this into a try catch. And then we can return await fetch. Otherwise, we can say something went haywire in this case. And then what the cache method is going to need from us is a key. So this is going to be your cache key. In this case, solid starts going to know how to store your cache and this kind of stuff. So every time you get data from that get data is going to store on this particular cache key. 
And if there's an error, we're going to catch and we're going to return no in this case. And that's how we're going to handle our errors in this particular scenario. So that's it. That's like the generic fetcher you can create. And now we're going to see how to use those, the generic fetcher inside our routes. So getting to our index routes, for example, what we, what we can do in solid is export a route variable. And this route's an object, and this object has a load key. With this load key, we're going to have our get data function. So this means that every time the user clicks on our route, the suspense is going to hold. So at this point, you can even have a fallback here saying navigating or whatever you want to do. And this is basically going to hold until this method from our route comes back. So our date, our route is only our component is only going to render when this data is back. So to use this data inside our component, what we're going to do is have our data and then we're going to use this new method called create async. And this create async is going to receive our data. So essentially this is going to be receiving the response from our load. Once this is done, I can then use combine with that suspense that's holding my entire route until the data arrives, I can then put something here, for example, and I can use the show component to make sure that I'm only going to show this whenever my data is available. And then I'll have the data as the fallback. And then I can say, yeah, I have the data. Oh, and, um, yeah, so TypeScript's complaining because what I did here is I went too simplistic on my DB. So in here, I don't want to return this because this is actually the response of my native fetcher. So I'm going to return the response parsed as JSON. And now my types are fine. So this is the bare minimum basics that you can do. So remember that in our data back here, we are catching an error and returning null. So in, in here, you, we can then use the error boundary from solid to make sh sure we're handling some API errors in this case. So what we're going to do is create a new effect. And this effect is going to go and say, if my data is no, which means my error got caught and I return no, I'm going to throw a new error that's going to be a 404 in this case, because I don't want my data to show. So with this, I can come back to my app and then I can wrap my entire thing into an error boundary. And look at this again. I'm putting my error boundary inside the root. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create this fallback and then I'm going to receive my error and I'm going to pass it down to my error component that I have not created yet. So now inside components, let's create a new error. So now I'm creating this new error and this new error is going to receive my props. And the props in this case are going to be an error. And right here, I'm just going to pick 404 as a string. And so I'm going to render whatever is inside and then, oops, it went wrong. And then solid start has this component called HTTP status code that's coming from solid start. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pass as a number my props code. That's it. So now back into here, I have my error component. I just need to import it. So this is the bare minimum. I have a repository down below in the first comment that I have pushed this with actual call to an actual API. So you can see it at work, but these are the bare minimum that you need to do to get your stuff started and create integrations with others. So you have error handling, you have a synchronous data function, you have preloading data on your routes, all from this a uh, little template, and then you can just go on and toss whatever integration you have inside. So now you got all the code right to get your integration going. 
but maybe you want your template or your example or your getting started app to pop a little bit more. And so I'm gonna give you four, not one, four different alternatives for component libraries that you can use as a drop-in replacement. They work with whatever styling choice you have. If you do Tailwind, Uno CSS, Panda CSS, Vanilla CSS, SAS, whatever, um, you can bring in your own styles because they are pretty much unstyled. Uh, some are more opinionated than others, but you can go on. The first one is our top of mind because it's been around for longer. It's called Cobalt. Cobalt started in a solid hack that for a port to Radix UI, which is a famous headless component library for React. And since then it has grew beyond this initial plan. And so that's your first alternative if you wanna use drop-in components. Moving on to our second one is Corvu, which is a brand new component library in the same style as Cobalt, but made by another member of our solid community. So check it out, it's in still in its early stages, but from what I've seen, it's an amazing library. And again, another very green field for you if you wanna get your open source contributions up. On the third one is ArcUI, which has its own integration called ParkUI that you can use. Uh, it supports multiple frameworks, Solid being one of them, and you can use um, all of those components in your app. And then the fourth one is a port to the famous ShedCN UI, which is a library for React. Uh, and what we have is Solid UI which uh, are made by our community members and they have, as far as I know, all the components that Shad CNUI do and they have pretty much the same kind of integration story. So go ahead, check it out. You can use them. All of these four alternatives are great. I've tested a lot of those components in different side projects and apps that I've been creating and they all work pretty, pretty well. And then I promised I'd give you a tip how to compound this one open source contribution. So you create your template, you write a document, so you have content and you have your open source project in your own name. And now there's another way for you to even get contributing to Solid through that contribution. So the Solid website has a resources page and then you can go on open a pull request and it's gonna get merged in our resources, which means your library, your template, your project is now discoverable on this one-stop shop for everybody in the Solid community. And so that's it. I hope you, it helps you get started. If you do something, please let me know in the comments. I'm planning to do a highlight of all the things uh, we have going with Solid Start in the next month or so. If you happen to have a nice guest author program, let me know in the comments below and I'm, I'll be sure to amplify it and hopefully we get more people getting started creating content and doing nice things on the web. So that's it for me. Uh, the algorithm thinks you should be watching something else next and yeah. See you later. Bye.